Welcome back to The Gentleman's Gazette in our series, Fabric Explained. Today, we discuss linen, the quintessential summer fabric. Linen fabric derived from the flax plant, the oldest cultivated plant known to men. The flax plant's Latin name is Linum Usitatissimum, and from that, the word linen was derived. Archaeological evidence was found in a cave in Georgia, the country, not the state, that dates back 34,000 years. Around 3000 BC, Mesopotamians mastered the cultivation of the flax plant and they used it to create ropes, threads, and even clothing out of it. At the time, it was a luxury, and as such, it was reserved for the wealthier classes, including priests. The same was true in ancient Egypt, where linen fabric was a symbol for status and wealth. For example, their pharaohs were mummified in linen or flax fabric. It's also referenced in the Bible many times, and from the Middle East, it spread to Asia and Europe. Romans and Greeks believed that linen was a sign of purity and royalty. Around 700 AD in France, linen was used as a sanitary fabric, and because of it, it became more popular throughout Europe, especially in places like Ireland, where it became a thriving trade. To this day, Irish linen is often referenced as a hallmark of quality for linen. If you want to know if countries of origins matter, please check out this video here. So why was linen so popular? Well, it has always been a strong and sturdy fabric, and so it was used in many industries. Just think of books, tablecloths, bed linens, canvases, upholstery, and so forth. Over the course of the last 100 years, linen has gotten a lot of competition from things like cotton, wool, or cashmere, but also artificial fibers such as viscose. Today, more and more people are becoming interested in linen again, not just because of its strength and longevity, but also because of its eco-friendliness. We'll talk more about the small environmental impact of linen later in the video. So what are the characteristics of linen and why it's such a great fabric for clothing and accessories? First of all, it is stronger, more durable, and also more lustrous than, for example, cotton. And if you want to learn more about that fabric, check out this video here. It is also quite crisp and absorbent, and it typically wears rather cool because the weave is a little looser than most cotton or wool fabrics. Because of that, linen fabric usually feels more porous, and a lot of people appreciate its heat and moisture wicking abilities. On top of that, if you won't have any problems with pilling because the fibers are very long or any type of static which you might experience with polyester or other artificial fibers. Typically, high quality flax fibers are between 18 and 30 inches long. And while that makes them durable, it also means they're not very likely to relax, which means linen is a very wrinkly fabric. Unlike the wrinkles in cotton, which make you look a bit more frumpy. The really pronounced characteristic wrinkles of linen are a sign of sophisticated casual style. Because linen is absorbent, it also takes dye very easily and it typically comes in many different colors. Because linen doesn't stretch much naturally, it pays to have garments that are cut a little wider. But when you do that, over time, the fabric becomes softer and you'll cherish the garment even more. So how exactly is linen made? Well, it all starts with a flax plant, which is mostly cultivated in Europe these days, in places like France, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, or Ireland. Of course, flax is also cultivated in other countries, such as Canada or China, but most people would consider the European flax to be the best for a high quality linen fabric. Now the process from a flax plant to a linen fabric is actually quite complicated. The flax is typically harvested after 100 days of growth. Harvesting flax is a delicate process because it has to be uprooted rather than just being cut. Why? Well, if the stalk is cut, you'll have some sap which impacts the fibers negatively. It used to be done all by hand and was labor intensive. Today, it can be done by machines. In a second step, the plants were rippled, which meant the seeds were removed. The next step is redding, which means that you leave the flax plant on the field where they experience the elements such as rain and sun. That makes the outside bark loosen up, which makes the flax plant ready for the next step in linen production. This next step is called scutching. There you would take the dried flax stalks and put them into a flax break where it would crush the inside part of the flax, leaving the flax fiber exposed. 
These small broken pieces are called shives and they were traditionally now removed during the scutching process, which meant that you had two pieces of wood and you basically got out all the residual bark from the fibers. Today, all of this is done by a scutching machine with rotating paddles, removing all the shives neatly and just leaving the nice flax fibers. Because flax is a natural material, fibers have different lengths. But for linen production, you only want the long fibers. And to get those, you had to traditionally comb the fibers so the short ones would stick in the comb and you were left over with the long, good ones. Of course, the flax combing presses is now also all done by machines and the result is better and faster. In a next step, the blonde, hair-like, 18 to 30 inch long flex fibers are then spun into a yarn. The yarn is then reeled on spools and they go through a hot water bath, which ensures a cohesive yarn and it lends the yarn some shine. The finished yarn reels are wound into bobbins and then they can be used for weaving fabric. The weaving of linen is very similar to other fabrics such as wool, silk or cotton. So before you actually weave the fabric, the flex yarn is inspected for moisture content, tensile strength, cohesion and color consistency. The yarn bobbins are made into warp beans, which can be up to 10 kilometers or six miles long. Traditionally, linen was hand woven in a very slow mechanical process. Today, you have high speed looms that create fabric pretty quickly. Just like with any woven fabric, they're inspected afterwards to find and remedy any defects, and then it's time to send it to the finishing department. Linen is typically washed and then bleached and dyed, and sometimes it also receives a water repellent or fire repellent treatment. Now, just like with wool or cotton, there's a different range of qualities for apparel fabrics, and the weave and the weight of linen have a huge impact on how it drapes and how it wears. Generally, the most popular linen used for clothing is often referred to as Irish linen, and it's typically a linen that is about 10 to 13 ounces heavy. Personally, I find a designation confusing because in Ireland, they produce linen of all kinds of weights and weaves. So it's just a designation that historically evolved, but it's not really helpful to the consumer. In my experience, heavier linen drapes better and the wrinkles you see are maybe a bit bigger and not as pronounced as the linen of lighter fabrics. This type of linen is often used for suits because it looks very sophisticated. And if you want to learn more about summer suits in general and the details to choose, please check out this guide here. Another common linen is the so-called European linen, which is usually about eight to nine ounces heavy, and it shows more wrinkles than the heavier linen. Some people like to use this linen, especially in very hot climates, because it usually wears a bit cooler. It is also used for shirts or things like shorts. An even lighter variety is the so-called cambric linen, which is usually about six ounces heavy, and it often has this kind of mottled two-tone characteristic, which gives you a very casual look. Because of that, it's popular with shirting fabrics, as well as pocket square fabrics. If you'd make a pocket square out of a heavy 13 ounce Irish linen, it would just be too big in your pocket and look unsightly. At Fort Belvedere, we pay great attention to detail. And so all of our linen pocket squares have the exact size that is perfect for the weight of the linen. You can check out our selection of high quality Italian linen pocket squares, which are all hand rolled here. Now, the hard wearing properties of linen are also often utilized to blend them with other fibers, such as cotton or polyester. Lately, it has also been blended with wool, which leads to quite interesting results. Now, typically the heaviest linens can reach all the way up to 15 ounces, but they're typically reserved for tablecloths or bed linen and not used for the apparel industry because they're just too heavy and stiff. So what about the environmental impact of linen? Next to hemp, it is probably the most eco-friendly fiber or fabric out there. Even though they're technically not necessary, chemical fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides are used in the linen production, which is not so great for the environment. Also, if the process of redding takes place in rivers, that obviously 
pollutes the river with certain chemicals, but there are now also things like enzyme redding that are much more environmentally friendly. On the bright side, flax can be cultivated even under poor soil conditions with very little water, which means the plant uses very little water, let's say compared to cotton. On top of that, everything of the flax plant can be used. On the one hand, you can actually use the flax seeds and you can make linseed oil. The fibers that are not appropriate for the linen fabric can be used to make burlap or sewing thread for heavy leather. While most linen fabrics are actually dyed and colored, an undyed piece of linen is actually biodegradable. Now, knowing that it's not just a strong and sturdy fabric that has a nice sheen, but it's also very environmentally friendly, how should you go about buying linen garments and what do you have to pay attention to? As I mentioned before, the best quality linens come from Europe. Personally, we've worked with French, Belgian, Irish, and Italian linen, and they've all been of very high quality. If we'd have to pick one as the winner, it would probably be the Italian linen because the Italians have really mastered the finishing process in fabrics and they also, I would say today, dominate the wool fabric trade because of it. So first of all, find out where the linen is from and what base material was used. Second, look at the weight. If you want something heavier, 10 to 13 ounces is good. Something lighter weight, about eight to nine ounces is better. And six ounces is great for shirts or pocket squares. That being said, the weight alone doesn't determine how cool something wears. The weave is also very important. And if you have a looser weave and you can see more air holes, that'll mean you'll feel every breeze more easily than if you have a very tightly woven linen. You can really feel the difference if you stand in front of a fan, for example. Alternatively, you can hold up your linen towards a strong light source and see which one shows more light Typically, we recommend that the first pocket square every man should own is a white linen pocket square with a hand-rolled edge, and we offer them without monograms or with your hand-monogrammed initial in our shop here. Of course, we have also other linen colors. We have handcrafted linen, and they come with a fine contrasting cross-stitch, and they add really nice texture, and they just look very handsome. Linen is also great for suits, pants, and sport coats. And because it is typically a warm weather fabric, most suits will have a single breasted silhouette simply because you have just one layer of fabric rather than a double layer of fabric over your chest and belly. However, with the popularization of double breasted styles in more casual sport coats in recent years, you can now also find double breasted linen suits and sport coats. Because linen is prone to wrinkling, it has typically a more casual character. And if you go for a linen sport coat or a jacket, I think it looks best with patch pockets because they underline that casualness. They just look better than jetted or flat pockets. And in the same vein, a pair of contrast buttons simply make things more relaxed and more appropriate for a linen suit or sport coat. Because linen fiber is not flexible and it doesn't stretch, I like my linen garments to be cut slightly on the looser side. And because of that, a pair of pants for me typically has pleats and even shorts should have pleats. They're just more comfortable to wear that way. I also think the extra room works well for a more casual summer look. Some people also like linen for shirts, including dress shirts or things like Henley shirts or popover shirts. Overall, it's a very casual shirt, so make sure you have a very soft collar and soft cuffs and skip the stiff interlining. If you're not sure if a linen shirt is right for you, you can find them even at places like Uniqlo for about 30 bucks. They even have a great range of color and you can see if it works for you. Typically off the rack, most linen shirts are gonna be in solid colors of pastel. If you go for custom linen shirts, you can find a much greater range of patterned linen in herringbones or dots or checks. It really gives you the ability to create a one-of-a-kind shirt that cannot be found off the rack. In recent years, I've also found linen sweaters. Personally, I always find them a bit harsh on their own, and rather than going with a 100% linen sweater, maybe a blended linen and cotton sweater are much more preferable. Linen can also be great for things like neckties or bow ties because they really casualize your outfit. Overall, when it comes to accessories or garments, 
Linen is a great way to make things breezier, lighter, more summery, and overall more casual. So how do you care for linen? Well, on the bright side, linen fabrics don't have lint and they're not prone to pilling, so you don't have to worry about that. Typically, a warm hand wash or delicate machine wash are best. Ideally, use a mild laundry detergent, but always stay clear of bleach because that will ruin your linen garment. If you find a stain on your linen garment, you can dilute some hydrogen peroxide or use some laundry detergent in water and let it soak for about 30 to 45 minutes. Always keep in mind that harsh scrubbing or rubbing is not great for linen because the weave is typically a little coarser and it will just be more likely to destroy the garment. Just make sure it's properly rinsed and then ideally let it air dry and don't put it in the dryer. If you want to learn more about how to take care of your wardrobe, please check out this guide here. Now what about ironing? Linen wrinkles a lot and therefore it's best ironed. Fortunately, you can iron it very high and you don't need an extra cloth like you would need with wool. It's best ironed with a steam iron or ideally when it's still slightly moist so you can remove all the wrinkles from it. For in-depth ironing tutorials for shirts, pants and jackets, please check out these videos here. After all, keep in mind, linen will always wrinkle and it's just part of the charm of the fabric. So don't work against it, just learn to live with it. Today's outfit is full of linen. I'm wearing a simple white dress shirt with barrel cuffs because it's a warm weather outfit, so I don't want double French cuffs. I'm pairing it with a linen sport coat in a gray white Prince of Wales check with a light blue and light turquoise over check. It's one of those double breasted summer sport coats and it also features patch pockets and contrasting white buttons. It's from the brand Galliardi. Because the jacket is bolder, I paired it with a low contrast light blue linen tie by Ford Belvedere, which we unfortunately no longer stock. The color tone is picked up by the light blue delphinium boutonniere. And for my pocket square, I could have gone with some linen, but I went with a contrasting texture in silk. It's a printed paisley in tones of brown and blue. I chose it because it picks up the blue of my tie and my jacket, as well as the brown and cognac tones of my shoes and my Fort Belvedere shoelaces. The shoes also have a summery vibe because they have this woven leather texture and just a nice warm brown color. They're combined with an unusual petrol turquoise colored pair of linen pants and there's a bit of contrast between them and the shoes in the pair of shadow striped socks from Fort Belvedere in light gray and blue which pick up the colors of my jacket thus tying it all together. Thank <laughs> you.